Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today is day three of our 30-day sequel challenge. If you missed day one and day two, have no fear. It is on Learning with Jelly so that you can go back and learn what we missed because these days will build off of one another. So day three, we're just getting started in understanding the basic SQL syntax. So we have already discussed what SQL is and what SQL is versus no SQL. In the last episode, we already downloaded SQLite Studio to help us practice our SQL skills. If you were unable to download SQLite Studio, that is fine. You can download my SQL with my SQL Workbench, or you can use an online tool, and I'll link the online online tool in the description below. So now on day three, we can actually start coding a little bit. So let's talk about the basic SQL syntax. So after we discuss the syntax rules, we're then gonna talk about how we can comment our code because commenting is very, very crucial. We are then going to discuss the differences between SQL statements versus clauses. There's a slight difference between those two terms. We're going to talk about how you write SQL is not necessarily how it's executed on the back end. And that's gonna be very important for troubleshooting our code later on. And then we're gonna get into SQL Studio and actually, actually practice some of these things. So if you're new to the SQL 30 day challenge, welcome. Here are the resources that you would need. So on the left hand side of my screen, you see a topic list. This is a Word document where I update additional resources as well as links to every video. If you don't want to go back and see the video links, hit the notification bell. You will be notified when I post a video. And on the right hand side is our Facebook support group, Tech Data Careers for All. In this support group, we have an open chat community as well, where you can ask questions, provide feedback, and find a buddy to help you practice your SQL with. So let's get into the general syntax rules. So SQL statements end with a semicolon, not every line, but the entire statement. And I will show you what I mean later on, but pretty much once you write a complete statement, you can end that with a semicolon. In a lot of tools nowadays, it doesn't matter if you put a semicolon at the end, but it is still great practice. So we're going to practice that. SQL keywords are not case sensitive. So this is for SQL keywords or keywords that we use in clauses. So SELECT in all caps is the same as SELECT in all lowercase. It is beneficial if you write the keywords in all caps because it makes it easier to read. However, it will still run even if you don't have the proper case. However, table and column names inside of the data set is case sensitive depending on the database system setup. So when you go into the industry, table names as well as column names may be case sensitive. It all depends on the tool and the database management system, the DBMS that we discuss in day one. Data in the data table is case sensitive. So notice keywords and you'll figure out what the keywords is momentarily. That is select from, group by, having, order by. All of those clause keywords are not case sensitive. However, the data that exists in the data table is case sensitive. So for instance, if I'm filtering for dog in the pet column, you need to type, capital D, lowercase o, lowercase g, not dog in all caps or dog in all lowercase, okay? Because these are two completely different things versus dog and proper case. And when we talk about proper case, that just means that the first letter is capitalized and the rest is lowercase, okay? So keep this in mind. And when you get an error, make sure that you're spelling the data correctly with the proper case. That is why I like to look at the data first, okay? And make sure that you have that semicolon if it's needed at the end of every statement. So commenting code. So I don't care if you're typing in SQL, Python, Java, C, it does not matter. It is always good to comment your code. 
That way other people on your team know what you're doing. If you were to leave the company and you're training someone underneath you, it makes it so much easier for them to kind of fill in your shoes as well. Commenting code is just great. Okay, so always, always comment your code. There's two main types of comments. There's a single line comment that starts with a double hyphen. And normally comments are gray in a lot of SQL tools. So you'll be able to know because the color changes to like a light gray. And multi-line comments are a backslash forward slash, I'm sorry, forward slash asterisk or star. You put your comment in the middle, then you close it with another star forward slash. So the stars, I like to remind myself, hug the words. Now, don't put a whole bunch of comments inside your code where it's hard to actually read the code, where you're commenting every single line that is making it hard to actually read what's going on in the code. I like to have multi-line comments at the top before I even start coding, just to describe what this script is about but don't just make it so comment heavy. However, make sure that you put in comments where the steps that you're doing is not common knowledge, okay? Say for instance, you're joining two tables in a different way and it must be joined that way because of X, Y, and Z. Make sure you add things like that as a comment. So now let's talk about statements versus clauses because I said every statement ends in a semicolon. So statements are complete commands that perform a specific task. For instance, we want to query data. That is going to be the select statement. We want to insert data into a table. That is the insert statement. We want to update a table. That is the update statement. We want to delete a table. So all of these are complete commands. Now, these complete commands have what we call subparts. You can think of them as little options, okay? And these are considered clauses of the statement and they just define the specification. So in the select statement, which is the main statement that we're gonna focus on in this 30 day challenge, you can have the where clause where you can filter. You can have the order by clause where you can actually order your table based off of columns and you have the group by clause where you can actually group your table based off of a column all of these are clauses for the select statement okay so clauses are subparts of a statement statement are complete commands now how you write these clauses is different than how they're actually executed by the SQL engine on the back end. And this kind of frustrates people who are new to SQL. I'm sorry, I didn't invent the SQL language. I wish I would have, but how you write SQL is different than how the computer actually executes it. So how we write it, and we're focusing on the select statement here. And within the select statement, you have multiple clauses. You have the select clause. So some people get that confused. The select statement has a select clause. You have a from clause in the select statement, a where clause, a group by clause, having clause, etc. And the only two required clauses is select and from. Some people say the only required clause is the select clause. I'm sticking with, for educational purposes, for beginners, the two required clauses is select and from. It needs to know what you want to select and it needs to know where you want to select it from, okay? So you have to write it in this order. You cannot put group by above the where clause. It's going to throw an error. You can't put order by after the select clause. It will throw an error. However, how it is actually executed on the back end is different than the order that was written. So when we're actually, when the computer reads SQL on the back end, the from clause is what it is looking at first. What table do I need to get first? Then it's going to do the filtering. If you have that, then it's going to group the data. If you have that clause, then it's going to have a having, which is a special filter based off of a group. Then it's going to do the selects clause. So notice how we wrote it, the select comes first, but how it's executed, the select comes one, two, three, four, fifth in this specific example. 
So let's look at it side by side so we don't have to flip from slide to slide. So in this case, this is the written order. This is how we're gonna write SQL. On the back end, the SQL engine is going to execute it in a very different order. But you see that order by and limit kind of stays the same. It's in the same order, okay? This is gonna help us with debugging later. So don't focus on the execution now, but if you're getting an error, this will help you with debugging. Cause most of the time I see students trying to put a filter and they're using a alias and we're gonna talk about an alias. And sometimes it does not work because the alias only exists in the select clause and it hasn't gotten there yet. Okay, and we're gonna talk about that later. But for now, I want you to know that you have to write the select statement clauses in a specific order. And the select statement is made up of these clauses and that is how we are going to write them. So now let's get into practicing and I'm going to go into SQL Studio on my computer. If you do not have SQLite Studio download, you can check out day two. If you had a hard time downloading it in day two, then you can use another option for you, such as MySQL, or you can use an online SQL tool that I'm going to link in the description below. So when I open up my SQLite Studio, I'm using 3.3.3. .3. We already have a example here from day two. I noticed that my database list is actually missing. So I'm gonna go to the view bar and I'm gonna check databases. So I have a nice look of my Chinook database. If you do not have a database imported into your SQLite Studio, once again, check out day two, but you can add a database just by going up to this database in the toolbar and click add a database. And you're going to want to search for a file on your computer by hitting this folder that is a .db file. That stands for database. And I will put a link in the description below of the Chinook database that you can upload inside of SQLite Studio. If you're using an online editor, they actually have built-in databases for you. It's just that your tables names will be different. So you can choose any table that you would like, but practicing SQL will remain the same. Okay. All right. So let's get into first writing a comment. So let's do a nice little multi-line comment. Say for instance, I want to explore employees inside of this database. So I'm going to say this script or program is exploring employees. And notice I'm going to actually hit enter and I'm going to put the date written and I'm just going to put June 16th, 24. And then I'm going to put a uh, email And I'm just going to put xxxx at gmail.com. So if anybody is going through this script, they can email me internally if they have any questions. So this is what we see a multi-line comment where we have the asterisk, which is above the number eight on your computer. And the stars are inside of my comments. So the stars hug the comments. Okay. And then we have our forward slashes. So then I can do a simple select statement. So I can select, and we're gonna talk about select statements um, in the next video, but I'm gonna select asterisk, that means select everything from the name of my database, which is chinook.employees. And this is the table that I want to select everything from. So this is the end of my select statement. So I'm gonna put a semicolon here. Notice that I didn't put a semicolon at the end of every line. I just put a semicolon at the end of the entire statement. And then I'm going to make a comment that says, a single line comment with my double hyphens that says viewing data. Now, I wouldn't put this comment in the industry because people know that you're viewing data. 
I also will be mindful that this is a small data set. So I'm selecting to view everything. When you're in the industry, you may not want to view everything in the data table. It will take forever to execute. Then your coworkers will be mad at you because you're taking up too much CPU. Okay. So I will do my best to make notes of the differences between the academic setting and the industry setting. This is one difference. We're selecting everything from a table. You would not want to select everything from a table. Most of the time, we will put a limit and only select the first five rows, okay? And keep in mind that this semicolon is coming after all of my clauses in the select statement. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and hit the play button. And here, this is what I get. I get the first five rows of my database since I hit limit five, okay? But as you can tell, the comments are in a light gray. This is a multi-line comment. This is a single line comment. And look how it's not case sensitive. So if I put select in all caps here and I rerun, it will give me the same output. Okay, but notice that I put my keywords on different lines. So it didn't matter whether or not I made it all caps, but I put it on different lines for ease of reading. Don't keep typing out long paragraphs on the same line. Your group mates will hate you. Okay, so sometimes it's good to break up based off of clauses. Okay. And notice here, the employees table is all lowercase. Let's see what happens if I make the table all capital. What does it do? It still works for this particular tool. It may not always work. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch it back to how it actually looks in the database. Okay. So those are some basic syntax rules for SQL to get us up and running for our future SQL less, um, lessons. Keep in mind the order that we write it in matters, how it's executed matters. Um, keywords are not case sensitive. We're going to keep tables and columns within our tables um, case um, sensitive and so forth. Okay. So let's flip back to the PowerPoint. So once again, this is day three. I'm going to link these resources in the description below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. I do have an Etsy that's linked in the description below to help create in content. You can buy a data nerd search. You can also buy me a coffee so that I'm able to keep up creating free content for you. Please subscribe to the channel and feel free to follow me on LinkedIn. Thank you all. And we look forward to day four. Bye-bye.